Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss Appendix C, and it's about finding Lyapunov functions. All right, when I develop Lyapunov method and the Lasalle invariance principle, I always pulled out these functions. I think I call them V of X. And they had the nice properties that uh, made things work. And whenever I do this in class and, and you know, pull out these functions and do these calculations and show how things turn out nicely, students always say, how do I find Lyapunov functions in general? Well, that's not so easy. So I wanted to have an appendix which talked about some of the issues. Generally, you need to know something about the special structure of the equations that's compatible with the existence of a Lyapunov function. In general, that means that there is something like an energy function that's associated with the equation. Now, there's a lot of qualifiers in those statements, and I'm going to make it precise what I mean by that in some examples. I've given you a few references for this. I mean, this a lot of this, Lyapunov knew mechanics quite well. And as I mentioned in the very first lecture, ODEs came out of calculus, and calculus came out of trying to develop a... Um, mathematical theory of mechanical systems. So that should not come as a bit of a surprise that there's mechanics motivation behind finding Lyapunov functions. So let's, enough talking, let's start with a simple mechanical system in one dimension. M x double dot is minus d phi dx. This is Newton's equations in one dimension under the, uh, where the force is a conservative force. It's given by the negative derivative of this function phi, we call the potential energy function. Okay, so let's write that as a first order system, and that's what we have below. All right, now the point, energy is conserved for this system. And the energy function has this form. And so what that means, energy being conserved, is that the time derivative of this function E is zero. Now time derivative means derivative along trajectories. Along a trajectory, this function does not change in time. And it's a simple calculation to show that's the case. All right, now I'm going to give you a couple of examples. We've seen them already, and you can see how this idea is applied. x dot equals y, y dot is minus x minus delta y. Delta is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so if we have no, if delta is, this term is non -zero, is zero, then we see there is an energy function y squared over 2 plus x squared over 2, it's easy to verify that dE dt is 0. All right. What, what's going on here? Well, now if we go back to the original equation and compute dE dt that has used this energy that would be conserved for delta equals 0 as a Lyapunov function, we see, first of all, that it's positive everywhere except at the origin, which is an equilibrium point, and dE dt is minus delta y squared. So the derivative along trajectories is less than or equal to zero. So we could use this to apply Lyapunov's method to look at stability of the origin or apply the Lasalle invariance principle to look at um, uh, whether or not the origin is asymptotically stable. Now, in this particular case, we can easily linearize. 
Okay, now let's look at a more complicated example. And I told you earlier on that you would I, uh, you would see where my funny example came from, my function that I use for this. So x out equals y, y, to, y dot equals x minus x cubed minus delta y. And this is the one which has three equilibria. Okay, it's a saddle point at the origin and uh, thinks to either side, uh, plus one, plus or, at plus one, plus or minus one, zero. Okay. Let's let that delta term be zero. And this was the strange function I said, let's look at this for, for the Lasalle invariance principle problem. You can easily verify that dE dt is zero when there's no delta term here. And then if you, you can use this to apply the Lasalle invariance principle for delta greater than zero. And you can verify that the EDT is minus delta y squared. So these are, these are the, the point here is that we had function where it was natural to associate this function we called energy. And then if we added an extra term to that, the energy was not conserved, but if, if, if we call the energy function E, dE dt is less than or equal to zero when we differentiate that energy function along trajectories. And this is one of the main ways that we find Lyapunov functions. We have a system, we can say, okay, if we look at this part of the system, if we look at only these terms, that looks like an energy and it's conserved. And then this extra term is, breaks the conservation of energy, damping in mechanical systems. And so we can, why don't we try to use this energy function, energy-like function, as a Lyapunov function? And that's often how we start. And I said here in the, at the beginning, there's often a bit of mathematical artistry that's required, and that's always the case. Finding Lyapunov functions for general systems is not so easy. And it requires some mathematical artistry. For something like Newton's equations with a damping term, it's much more straightforward. In these two examples that I gave in this appendix, for one degree of freedom examples, that's essentially what I've done in this case. Okay, I think I said earlier on that this would be a bit anticlimactic. Hopefully it's a bit useful. It tells you where these functions came from in terms of mechanics. But still, there is no general algorithm for finding a Lyapunov function. That's, so we have Lyapunov's method, the Saul invariance principle, and linearization. Linearization, if it's, if it's a hyperbolic fixed point, we can always get conclusions about stability. If we can solve the linear equations, we could put those on a computer if they were very complicated. There were a lot of parameters involved that we had to vary that may make that computational problem difficult. Um, but Lyapunov and LaSalle give us more information, as you saw with LaSalle invariance principle. And they also work in the non-hyperbolic case. OK, that's enough for now. And I'll come back to the next appendix in the next lecture. Bye for now.